Welcome to our astrology overview for the month of June. Drrr, drum roll, June. My God, we're already in the middle of the year. This is crazy. The year's flying by so fast. Oh man. All right, let's dive straight into this because there is a lot to talk about as usual. Well, this time I broke down the weeks, okay? So we can get a little more organized, week one, week two, week three, and week four. And I'm also going to let you know where the moon is going to be on each week, okay? Which signs it will be on each week. And the reason for that is because, as you've already noticed, I make a reference to lunar returns a lot. And I talk about a lot of the configurations that maybe are happening that particular week, but a lot of people with lunar returns on that specific week, they carry that energy from that week, that particular alignment throughout their month ahead. Um, and so I'm going to start letting you know where the moon is going to be on each week, which signs. This way, you can know that if your natal moon, for example, is in Virgo, and week three, let's say that the moon is in Virgo, you're having your lunar return on that week. And so the alignments that I'm referring to in that week, they are for the most part um, a part of the configuration for your lunar return for the month ahead. This is a much more uh, exciting way to understand what's gonna happen in your week, what's gonna happen in your month, and it's a really, really powerful uh, way to work with astrology when we work, when we incorporate lunar returns. So, as I go on and I describe what's happening on each week, if you happen to have your moon, your natal moon, in one of the signs for that week, which I will um, let you know, then a lot of those configurations in that particular week are specifically speaking to you, okay? Of course, not to mention if those alignments are interacting with your natal chart, of course, always that's the foundational piece that we use to understand how that is affecting you, okay? So, um, my name is Raquel Spring. For those of you that, that don't know me yet, I am a fourth generation astrologer and I love to show you how this works. So my style is a little bit different. I like to dig deeper. I like to look at the background, what's happening, what was happening before, right? Certain configurations take place because everything has a storyline. Everything has, everything's coming from somewhere and going somewhere as well. So when we understand the whole context of astrology or of a specific alignment, if we understand the storyline, things make more sense. So let us, let me see here if I have anything that I want to say before we start pulling up the chart. Overall, there is this really beautiful um, support that is coming through, especially toward our relationships, which is a very needed thing, right? Because I know that most of us have been going through massive roller coasters when it comes to relationships and partnerships as well. So this is the time where I've been talking about it in all my videos, how like it's almost like the universe has been stirring all this stuff and all this old karma and all these, we're like completing all these themes that revolve around um, relationships mainly because relationships are such a perfect mirror to us of many things. And so all these karmic relationships coming full circle and all these things happening and people leaving our lives and just all these crazy dynamics that have been revolving around relationships, really um, trying to get us to number one, finalize a lot of these repetitive cycles that no longer serve us that we've been playing out in relationships. But also we've been kind of like making room for new to come in for the new energy. So there has been this really interesting dynamic going on and that's been playing out in our karmic relationships um, in regard to that. But now you're going to see why relationships are very much starting to receive an, an energetic um, support from the universe. And you may notice now, even watching this now, even in the month of May, in the last um, week of the month of May, there is, things are calming down a little bit. 
you know there are like new partnerships coming into our lives or just a new soulmates right or these people that are just showing up now out of the blue which you know it's still part of the venus conjunct uranus dynamic which we're just leaving now after the full moon we still have this energetic of sudden people coming into our life yes leaving coming all of the above but now there's more support for the coming in and for the um resolution really of a lot of relationship themes that have been a big part of our stress <laughs> over this last month or two. So overall, June is very supportive of that. And I want to encourage you to take advantage of that because it's, it's a much needed breath of fresh air here, you know, and, and we are about to enter July, you know, really soon. And July, we have the two eclipses and things start to gain momentum again. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> gain momentum. So June is the month where we kind of chill and we kind of settle into the new energy of um, creating new healthy relationships, um, strengthening the ones that we have and that are ready to be strengthened now. And, and there is a really good focus on that. Now, take everything with a grain of salt, because even though the general relationship um, arena for the month of June is a lot calmer and receiving a lot of support now from the universe, we still um, have a lot of us who are in our lunar returns from the month of May. Okay, so here again, I, I, I like to work with lunar returns a lot. They are a great chart that you can work with that shows you the cycle for a month, of a month, for you specifically. And so everybody has a lunar return and the lunar return is basically when the transiting moon, the moon today in the sky, returns to the exact same placement by sign and degree as it was when you were born. So my question for you is, where is your natal moon in your chart? You know, if you wanna type down in the comments, where is your natal moon? You know, the moon to me is the most important thing in the chart anyway. Um, I'm very interested in the moon. Um, but then when the moon does that, it does that once a month for everybody, it returns, it goes all around, right, the zodiac, and it returns to the same place by sign and degree as it is in your natal chart. When it does that, boom, whatever's happening in the sky at that moment in time locks into place to form your map for the month ahead. We call this a lunar return, when the moon returns. To its place of origin at your birth okay as it was when you were born so lunar returns are one of the cycles that i like to work with in astrology it's a very small cycle but a very powerful one so a lot of people they they had their lunar returns when we had all the the crazy energetics you know all those squares to the capricorn stellium that we've been talking about in our videos and then recently it was all the conjunctions to uranus all right first of all first of all the sun then the um then mercury then venus and venus is just separating now in this last week of may so a lot of people with lunar returns you know if you had for example lunar return with a venus conjunct uranus which a lot of people did you know we're talking here a big handful of people that are still working with the venus and uranus energy which is what that disruption factor in relationships but it's also the unexpected new coming in so of course in order to understand better we have to evaluate the rest of your chart and to see how it's working with everything else but the venus and uranus conjunction is locked into place for many people in this lunar in, in this month ahead and so many of us are still continuing to work with that factor of relationships and all these sudden events that come as a consequence to our partnerships and relationships but for the most part in the month of june we have the support and things calm down a great deal. So without further ado, um, let me see here. Let us, let us, let us, let us. Okay, all right. 
So here we have a chart for the month of June, as you can see. And I went ahead and I um, made this chart here. If you guys are noticing, the, this chart is a little bit different than the, than the ones that I've been working with. And that is because, first of all, I took out the lines. I, I don't want to confuse you guys. I'm like, how can I just eliminate anything that's not necessary here? I took out the house cusps. That's not necessary. Again, we're just looking at the month of June. All we are concerned here with are the planets and how they are interacting with each other. It doesn't matter what the rising is. It doesn't matter all the other house cusps. It doesn't matter. This is going to be interacting with your chart. So Jupiter has this really like great um, regal quality to him. And when something opposes it, it can get a little scattered. Okay, just to simplify it here. That, that energy of Jupiter can be a little like, a little too much. Um, generally speaking, generally speaking, we can definitely uh, uh, use, you know, like a Mars and Jupiter opposition can definitely work really well together. We talked about it in the, in the May video, you know, these two very like ready for battle, ready for action planets, even in an opposition, they can work together really well. The sun as well. Okay, so the sun is coming into this opposition as you're going to see in the month of June. So we start the month of June. Here, here 28, 29. So we, we enter the month of June with Mercury beginning this opposition. Now, where it gets, um, you see this over here? Actually, it's, it's on the last few days of May that Mercury really begins, Mercury really unlocks in place here with this opposition. So you want to pay attention to these days. Why? These last few days, I'd say from the 27th until the 31st of May, I would advise you, if you can, not to sign any documents or make any big decisions that like have to do with work or business that, um, that need like careful attention and I, I wait, I wait until a little bit, until we're into the, the month of June for that, until the first or second week of the month of June. And the reason for that is because Mercury has a lot to do with documents, with paperwork, with emails, with um, messages, with communications, with negotiations, right? All these things that Mercury represents. And Mercury in an opposition with Jupiter can definitely, it's one thing to have a Mars opposition, opposition with, with, with Jupiter. It's another thing to have a, a Sun oppos opposition with Jupiter. But a Mercury opposition with Jupiter, we're all of a sudden, we're dealing here with communication. And, um, you know, coming out of sensitive territory with our relationship sector, we definitely want to <laughs> slow down here and take this time to really think things through before beginning new ventures or starting off these new partnerships and all that. And it begins with May 27th through May 31st. You want to be careful. Remember, Mercury is out of bounds. Mercury enters the out of bounds zone on May 27th. So this is going to be, people are going to want to go. Like, all right, let's speed things up because the momentum is definitely going to be there. It's definitely going to be there, especially with Mercury going out of bounds. Like everyone's going to want to speed things up. Um, and with all the beautiful support, you know, from like partnerships and so forth, like it, there's going to be a lot of momentum supporting this. But you still want to be careful on these days because the tendency here really is to um, overlook details with documents, contracts, things that are said, um, things that are even spoken agreements. You wanna be really careful on those dates. Now, the interesting dynamic here is that anything that opposes Jupiter is also creating a T-square with this already existing square between Jupiter and Neptune. Now, the square between Jupiter and Neptune is a theme that we are dealing with for most of the year of 2019. So much so that I made a whole video talking about this square in the beginning of the year. In the beginning of the year, I made a four-part series videos where I talked about all the main transits for 2019. And in one of the videos, I spoke just about this square here because it's going to be on for most of the year for us. Now, 
anything that opposes you know in this gemini season this is happening a lot because first we had mars opposing jupiter now it's mercury's turn next comes the sun and then it's going to be venus and so every time that this opposition happens with Jupiter, where we just want to take on the world, right? First with Mars, uh, the sun also wants to take on the world. Mercury is more of like the, the communication factor and, and, and the speaking and the mentality and thinking that we can do everything and we want to do all that. But Jupiter is not into details at all, at all. Jupiter's all about the big picture. So an opposition can definitely make you scatter and you want to be careful with that. But anything making an opposition with Jupiter is also in this T-square with Neptune. Now, this is something we want to definitely keep an eye out for because, yes, Jupiter and Neptune in a square, they have their own set of um, implications here, which we talked about in that video. In the, in the transits for 2019. But then when we have the T-square and the opposition factor, not only we're, we're, we're working with the dynamic of wanting to take on the world and so forth, all this, this, uh, this greatness from Jupiter that wants to expand all over the place, but we are also dealing with Neptune in Pisces, which is all about the blurring of the lines. So you see how things can get really tricky here if you're not careful, okay? Jupiter and Sagittarius are not known for being detail-oriented at all. Pisces and Neptune, they're not about the, the defined picture. If anything, they're about the blurriness, okay? They work under completely different context. When it comes to work and business and having everything down and checked, Pisces and Neptune is just not the sign to do it, not the planet to do it. So we want to definitely be careful on these days because that's, that's something that I would um, definitely caution you uh, right now to <laughs> circle those dates and just, if you can help it, if you can, try not to get into any like important paperwork on those days. Now, if you do have to, that's fine. Just be sure to be extra careful and, um, you know, make sure everything is correct and the way it's supposed to be because we are going to enter Mercury retrograde season as well. And you just want to make sure you're going to cross your T's and dot your I's starting now because you don't want any complications, any unnecessary complications in July when Mercury goes retrograde. So, um... Oh yeah, I put also uh, also to avoid booking flights if you can, <laughs> just because you know we don't want any like any any confusions also with that. We know that um, Mercury deals a lot with transportation, and especially when we're dealing with Sagittarius as well, which is the long the long the distance right travel the travel of the mind the travel physically it's all about the traveler. This can bring a lot of travel factors into the picture, and in a T square with Neptune, I mean, you just, you just want to be careful before you book flights and you make any arrangements to travel to just make sure that things are really double checked and so forth. But um, that, those are the main things that I want to bring up here. So with that being said, let us begin with the, uh, now we begin here with June. And again, for those of you that are just uh, watching my videos for the first time, I like to give a good solid background and also overview on some of, of the, the alignments like for example i know i spoke a lot about the cancer energy the cancer north node i also spent a long time talking about all the opposition with jupiter but that's because as we go on to the the rest of the weeks i'm not going to spend too long on it when i say okay because that cancer energy helping us move forward you already know what it means because i already explained it to you in the beginning now when i talk about an opposition with jupiter you already know what it means too because i already spent a long time explaining it. So that's why I like to spend a little extra time in the beginning covering these things. So in the first week, okay, from, and all the way from June 1st, it's gonna be a little over a week, but from June 1st until the closing of that first week of June, which is going to be June 9th, the moon is going to be in Taurus, Gemini, 
Cancer, and Leo. These are the lunar returns for the first week of June. And this is a great week too, by the way. So all of you with, with uh, moons in Taurus and Gemini and Cancer and Leo, you guys are having some pretty awesome alignments for, the, for your lunar return ahead, okay, for your month of June into July. Um, and what we, the, the only thing that we need to be a little cautious here is this T-square. Okay, especially the ones with the, with the natal moon in Taurus, especially the ones with the natal moon in Taurus, because they're the ones who are going to get the brunt of this. Wait, what did I do here? What did I, what did I do? I was going to show you something and I got just confused. I, okay, I just wanted to show how the, 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 the moon in Taurus, here we go. So, the moon is leaving Aries. So the last few degrees of Aries for all of you natal moons in Aries and most of the moon in Taurus, you guys are the ones that mainly need to be careful for this, this opposition that I told you about here between Mercury and Jupiter, okay? You definitely wanna dot your I's and cross your T's and any documents, any agreements, any arrangements because the tendency is to be scattered here with this with this opposition and this, this T square with Neptune only adds to the confusion. So you definitely want to be careful. You later degrees of Aries moons and most of Taurus moons as well, because you're carrying this energy for your month ahead. And then after that is Mercury retrograde. So there's my astrological tip for you. Um, but then, we have the next few days. See, the, the moon is already like uh, preparing to leave Taurus here on the last few degrees. And, you know, Mercury still is in this opposition. So I'd say, I'd say all the, the moon in Taurus. The last few degrees of natal moons in Aries and all of you natal moons in Tauruses, you guys need to be careful with documents and, and, and so forth and all those things, okay? Besides that, um, Besides that, relationships are very much supported. We are, you know, yes, okay, June, June is now dissipating from this conjunction with the North Node, but Mars is approaching it, and Mars is still out of bounds. So Mars is like all fire. He is ready to rock and roll. And how amazing it is that Mars is so charged like this as he conjuncts the North Node. Because this is really, we need that push from the universe at this point, because many of us are just so exhausted, so exhausted from the last two months that this little nudge here from this Mars out of bounds, crossing and um, starting to conjunct the, the North Node, which is our mission ahead, is very welcome, very, very welcome. So I love this. I mean, all of you guys who are, are, are getting this lunar return here, uh, especially this first week of June and into the, the um, into the ninth, this is fantastic. These are the main things that are happening here that I wanna tell you about this week. Of course, on the third, we have a new moon that happens, right? I'm not gonna look for the exact degree here right now, but um, this, is, this is the new moon that happens on June 3rd. And this is a whole other subject in and of itself because it talks a lot about the, the, the alignments and the energetics for the month ahead as well. Um, the new moons are a great cycle to work with. But other than that, we have the next day. The next day, Mercury enters Cancer, okay? Now, for this to happen, I'm going to have to fast forward by the hour here, which kind of sucks. I didn't want to have to do this because it changes all of the... There you go. Okay, so... I'm going to put it back to the way it was, but just to show you that we're still on June 4th, okay? And we have Mercury now leaving Gemini and entering Cancer. Remember Mercury's storyline. Mercury is out of, out of bounds here in this scenario, and it enters Cancer together with the moon, which adds a really strong dynamic to the Cancer energy. So, you know, June 4th, after this new moon, there's going to be a lot of Cancer energy, permeating the, <laughs> the ethers. You know, we already have all this going on in Cancer, but then the Moon and Mercury, they enter Cancer together. And that really brings in the Cancer season um, energy already in place, which 
I know we're not in cancer season yet, but here we go. I know we're not in cancer season yet, but with Mercury and cancer, the dynamic changes a lot because now we have the way that we express ourselves and the way that we think that is filtered under the light of cancer, okay, for this next month. And so the cancer energy overall is a lot more sensitive, a lot more sensitive than Gemini, you know, and especially with Mercury out of bounds, like everyone's going to have something to say. Everyone's going to have a truth to, to share. You know, everyone wants to be that voice of God. <laughs> and so with the Mercury and cancer, we, you know, we just want to be a little more, um, uh, aware that people are going to be more sensitive, more melodramatic, right? We have that whole moodiness that accompanies the cancer, but Overall, generally speaking, it, this won't be felt that much. I even want to invite you to like observe it and, and see for yourself, like after June 4th, when Mercury enters Cancer. I want you to observe it. I want you to, to see if, if you feel the energy change a lot in the way that you feel or in the way that you see other people communicate and, and go about business and, and so forth. So um, the, these outer planets, you know, especially Mercury, I, Mercury is so um, versatile and Mercury is also such a trickster that whenever we're dealing with Mercury, unless it's like under a really specific context, like when Mercury is out of bounds, when Mercury is retrograde, or when Mercury is conjunct Uranus or Pluto or like one of these massive factors, I don't usually keep an eye out on Mercury so much, not for transits. Um, but then a few days later, we have the, uh, Venus leaving Taurus and entering Gemini. And again, here we have that lightness, the right of Gemini and the lightheartedness. Of course, Gemini loves to socialize. And, you know, this could be a time where we overall feel a little more social and just playful and cheerful and all these good old Gemini attributes. But even then, I want you to take everything with a grain of salt because there is, it's so much more intricate than that. Like, you know, people are still working with the lunar returns from last month. Merc Venus was in Taurus before, and so we're still under that energy for a great deal. And a lot of other people are working with a lot of different cycles like solar returns and all those other things. So... You know, it's just good to know. I think for me, the main thing about uh, Mercury entering Cancer and Venus entering Gemini is that people that were born with a natal Venus in Gemini and people that were born with a natal Mercury in Cancer, these people are having their Mercury returns and Venus returns. So that's probably like the most important thing, in my opinion, that's happening here with Venus entering Gemini and Mercury entering Cancer. And so the planet's return is when the planet returns to its same point of origin by sign and degree as it was when you were born. And so a Mercury return indicates a brand new cycle of communication, relationships, business relationships, and negotiations, and um, just a lot of paperwork and studies if you're studying and all those Mercury related things you're beginning a new cycle. And the Venus is a new cycle for relationships, for matters of the heart, for women, relationship with women as well. Um, maybe even daughters, if you have daughters, a lot of times Venus um, can speak of daughters as well. Um, so all those themes with Venus uh, returning and, and concluding a cycle for you, natal Venus and Geminis, uh, this, this is all beginning a new cycle for you now. So that's like the most important thing here that I have to share. Um, but then as we conclude this week, you know, here we are on June 9th, this is a Sunday, and Mars is really, really, really beginning to conjunct the North Node now. So by the end of this week here, by June 9th, like we really have the, the speeding up and the moving forward of our goals, our plans, and all the, all the things that are directly aligned with our soul mission and purpose here. And even the, even the things that may seem like a little bit on the uncomfortable zone for us, as long as they are divinely guided by the universe and kind of like, you know, this is happening, you're going to thank me later for it. You know, as long as it's coming from the universe, let it come, let it be. And this is when Mars really starts to fuel things here. So 
you know, here we are concluding this first week of, 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 of June with such a massive momentum and speeding ahead of, of our direction in life. And this is marvelous. This really, really is marvelous. But the sun is now the one beginning this opposition with Jupiter. Therefore, the sun also creates a T-square with Neptune. And, you know, when we're dealing with the sun, like we already talked about Mars um, in the month of May video, we just talked about Mercury. And now the sun, the sun is more of our, um, our essence, right? And yes, it's our health, it's our vitality, it's our expression, but it's really the, the giving factor of our, of who we are. It's very external. It's a very extroverted energy, the sun, whereas the moon is more of the, recept, the receiving factor. The sun gives and the moon receives. So the sun is, in this case here, really um, speaking a lot about our power. Think of your solar plexus, you know, especially when we're dealing with transits that are like so general for everybody. We're, we're, we're looking here at our power factor. You know, you can't see me. I'm like, I got my hand here. A solar plexus, the solar plexus factor. And so you know, creating this, this opposition with Jupiter, it's not, it's not so bad. It's not, it's not one of those like horrible aspects or anything. It can be a little scattered. It can be, you know, definitely, we definitely have the two Kings here um, <laughs> at a tug of war. And so this could definitely be really powerful energy, but the sun is like the King of the solar system. And, and Jupiter thinks he's the King of the solar system because he's the second sun, right? <laughs> but he's really just the King of the, the, the planets. It, it's, and the sun is the king of all of them. So here we have the two kings sitting on their thrones in this little tug of war. Um, so yeah, here we have a, a very similar energy to Mars in the sense that we can promise more than we can deliver. We want to promise more than we can deliver, or we want to tell ourselves that we can do certain things that, you know, later on, maybe, you know, it wasn't that easy, like it wasn't as easy as, as we initially thought it was. But overall, it's not a really stressful aspect here, okay? But what makes it a little bit stressful is the, that Neptune is creating that T-square and it brings that, the uncertainty factor here. So Neptune is the one that can make you really go back and forth and wonder, like one day you feel like you can take on the world and maybe you can, but then the next day you can't take on the world. <laughs> <laughs> the next day you have a list of other things to do or you're sick or you had some inconvenience happen and you just can't take on the world anymore. And so that's where Neptune comes in being like, are you sure you did the right thing? Are you sure that's the direction you want to head? Like, and it's and like when we're dealing with men as well, this could be, you know, uh, the sun and both, both the sun and Jupiter, they're very much, they relate to men as well. So there can be a little bit of this confusion factor with, with this T square. Um, so it's just like one of those minor little things that we want to look out for, but it's definitely after coming from this intense, um, Capricorn energy where all these squares were happening from it. And after all these conjunctions to Uranus happened, like, this is not the end of the world. Trust me. <laughs> this is like the worst thing that we're dealing with here in this, in this, uh, month of June is, is this, all the planets that create this T-square with Jupiter and Neptune. So we just want to be a little extra cautious because again, Mercury retrograde is coming up and, um, you know, Mercury retrograde is a time where we can, you know, change our minds and just, yeah, let's, let's just keep in mind as we want to take on the world here with all of these oppositions to Jupiter. Okay. But, um, Yes, so that is our first week. The second week is from the week of the 10th to the 16th. And in these days, let me see here. You know what? We just finished the, 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 the until the 9th here and the moon is in Virgo. I told you, we, look, we covered the moon being in Taurus, right at the end of Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and Leo. But I didn't calculate Virgo because this is a little over a week. We're working from the 1st of June until the 9th of June, that first segment. So let's include the beginning of Virgo as well. You lunar returns with Virgos, you natal Virgo moons, especially you want to be careful here with this, 
remember how I started off saying that the, 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 the last few degrees of Aries moons and the Taurus moons, they needed to be careful with the paperwork, the traveling, because Mercury was going to be opposing Jupiter. And now I want to say the same thing for you, natal moons in Virgo. You definitely want to be careful here because now the sun is going to be the one creating this T-square. And with your natal moon here in Virgo, it's only going to um, fill the other side of, here we have the T-square, right? Gemini, Sagittarius, and then Pisces. But then Virgo is the other tip here to conclude this, the grand square, you know? So this can become even more of a problem, um, you know, if you're not careful during the Mercury retrograde, okay? Especially because Mercury retrograde, you know, Mercury rules Virgo as well. So you natal moons and Virgos, you especially want to be careful with dotting your, your I's and crossing your T's, okay? But then... And then for the, 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 the upcoming week we have, so starting from uh, June 10, we have the second half of Virgo. The moon is going to be in the second half of Virgo. Libra, Scorpio, and the first half of Sagittarius. Okay, so let's see what we're dealing with here in, in, the, in the second week. So in the second week we have, we start off, the, you know, June 10th. Boom, this is exact. Boom, look at this. Just exact this T-square. And we also want to keep in mind that this T-square is going to be probably the most dynamic of all because when does, when does Neptune, okay, on the 24th, not, uh, Venus square does that T-square on the 24th, but I think the sun is the most going to be the most intense one of all. And the reason for that is because Neptune is also stationing. Neptune is stationing to retrograde. So what we know that when a planet is stationing, the energy is enhanced. It's stronger. So this element of like, that element of uncertainty, of confusion, like it's stronger as well. Of course, with all the positive aspects as well. But, you know, we are talking about a T-square here. So we can mainly stick to the energy of the T-square, which can bring a lot of confusion here. So you know, you, you all here, especially with this, the, the, the moon in Virgo, especially in the mid degrees of Virgo, like you want to be careful. You definitely want to check everything, double check everything that has to do with paperwork. Don't take things that people say, just, oh, just taking people for their word. Make sure it's written down somewhere, you know, make sure that it's documented, especially if it's important. Um, what else do we, what else do we have? Other than that, you know, we are having, I will tell you what, even though Neptune is stationing and it is in this T-square with the sun and Jupiter, um, you know, the sun keeps moving along one degree a day. So it's just, this is like when it's exact here. But the stationing Neptune is also creating a beautiful trine with this North Node and now Mars as well. So the energy that we spoke of, the, the, the direction, the soul direction, and then Mars, you know, Mars out of bounds, charging ahead, the whole thing, the whole energy factor of it. I mean, this is really exciting. But now we have the support from Neptune in this beautiful trine. And this is where we can start looking at some of the positive aspects of Neptune. Because not only we're dealing with a trine, but we're also dealing with a trine to our soul's purpose. So this is an important trine that we want to pay attention to. And you know, here we have the energetics of a Neptune positively being the, the artistic, that creative factor, that compassionate, unconditional love factor. You know, obviously the ultimate spirituality that we can access is always seen by Neptune. And Neptune can definitely bring a really, really ethereal, um, um, beautiful uh, vibe to this, especially in a, in a I use the word ethereal, and I, and I was like, yeah, Mars. When Mars and, and uh, Neptune are in a trine together, this can also impact the, our sexual energy, okay? Because Mars is also sexual energy and our sexual drive and all that. And remember, Mars is out of bounds, and so is Mercury, <laughs> right? So Mars out of bounds is very, very full of testosterone here, <laughs> very charged. <clears throat> and so when it's in a trine with Neptune, it can add that like ethereal, like sexuality and that um, it can be very charming for sure. 
but it's more of that, like, um, how do I say it? Like that glamorous sort of sex appeal, you know, it can be really sexy. It can be a really hot, um, 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 trying to work with here, this combination of, of, of Mars and Neptune. On the other hand, the challenging side is that we have the, um, you know, maybe energy levels maybe a little bit lower also here because like in Neptune and Mars, especially in water signs, is really about going with the flow. You know, Mars and Cancer is all about going with the flow. You know, it's, it's very emotionally based. So it just depends where the flow is that day. But, um, you know, with the, the, the Neptune combining here, our energies may not be that up ahead, but we have a, a lot more of that spiritual element that is assisting things to just happen in their own timing. And, and there's a really beautiful flow here. I really like this, I really do. Um, very supportive as well for our partnerships you know, even though Juno is dissipating more and more in this conjunction with the North Node, it, it still is, and it has been. And this whole time that Juno, ever since after the, the full moon happened in Scorpio, all the way till here, till June 10th, you know, Neptune still is in trine, has still been trining the, the North Node. So even when Juno was smack dab conjuncting North Node, it was always receiving this influx from Neptune, which is very supportive. So our partnerships here, we have full momentum here. Very beautiful. Um, this is just like the, the challenge to overcome here is this, all this ego coming here, <laughs> all this masculine energy, one wanting to go this direction, this one wanting to come in that direction. And then when you're including all this, this masculine energy, then of course the Neptune is feels like a lost puppy and doesn't know what to do with all this testosterone and obviously you know here are the t square and it just can get a little confusing so other than that i i love this i love this combination and mercury is fast approaching mercury is fast approaching this combination so um Let's see, let's see. Yeah, you can even maybe attract spiritual romance at this time when, when Neptune is uh, in a trine with, with, with this combination that we just talked about, okay? Especially all of you um, um, moons that are having your natal moons in the last degrees of Virgo, in um, Libra, in Scorpio, and Sagittarius as well. Okay, at least the first half of Sagittarius. This week, there is the, uh, and of course, not to mention all of you having your birthdays around this time too, you get the solar return, right? You get this energy for the whole year. So there is this really supportive energy to, toward our mission, our goals, our purpose, but it can also be romance, especially with Juno involved. There can be a very spiritual element coming into your um romance at this time of your life, or maybe you'll meet someone that will really be a partner with you in that journey and help you grow and vice versa. Be very supportive, spiritually speaking. Um, but this, this conjunction is really happening all week. So all week long, all of you with, with those lunar placements and those signs, very supportive of moving ahead the whole month because you're getting that locked in place for your month ahead. So this is fantastic. And then... We have, let's see, here we have, okay, so week three, we start with the 17th. Okay, so now we have week three, the 17th until the 23rd, okay? And here we have the moon in the second half of Sagittarius, Capricorn, okay, you natal moons with uh, the, the second half of Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and the first half of Pisces. You guys are having your lunar return on this week, on the third week of June. So happy lunar returns. Um, we are starting off that week, June 17th, with a full moon. And this full moon is happening in Sagittarius. Okay, so the full moon chart is a whole other chart in and of itself. We usually do a whole video for that, but we're not going to get into details now. But that's what's happening as we open the week. Boom. Right off the bat, full moon, full moon in Sagittarius. And then on Thursday, something interesting happens to Mercury. Hmm. Let's see. 
on Thursday the 20th, so 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, um, do you see Mercury over here? And it's just, it's just gone by a few hours, a few hours of the day. I'm not going to change the hours, otherwise it's going to mess up all of these uh, where, where the placements are, and I want to leave the placements here. But on this day, on June uh, 20th, Mercury enters 2357 Cancer. In other words, 24 Cancer. And this, boom, this is significant. Why? Because this begins the retrograde path for Mercury. It doesn't mean Mercury is stationing retrograde on this day. It just means that 24 Cancer is the exact degree, actually 2354, but we can average it to 24. 24 Cancer is the degree where Mercury is going to station direct. When he leaves his retrograde motion, he stations direct, which is going to happen um, on July 31st. So uh, Mercury's going to retrograde on July 7th until the 31st. So on the 31st, when he, he's going to end his retrograde motion, he's going to do that right at this degree here, the 23 to 54 Cancer, 24 Cancer. So today he is, boom, he's crossing that degree for the first time, the first of three times. I mean, that path, that segment, all the way from 24 Cancer, all the way until four Leo, that segment is the segment of the retrograde for Mercury. And so this is going to become a hot spot. This is going to be, become a hot zone from 24 Cancer to four Leo is going to become a hot spot. We're going to talk about that on a whole video just dedicated to Mercury retrograde. But that's what happens on, on Thursday, June 20th, Mercury enters retrograde zone. Then on Friday, the 21st, we have a solstice and the sun enters zero Cancer. How beautiful. And right at this time, only a few hours before this happens, our dear Neptune stations direct, uh, retrograde. Here he is, retrograde. See, just a day before, he was not retrograde. Can you see how right over here where my mouse is, there's going to be a little R. Oh, there you go. That means retrograde. So Neptune begins his retrograde motion on the 21st, on June 21st, and he is going to retrograde all the way to November 26. Um, and so the path of the retrograde for Neptune is going to be the 18, right? He's at 18 Pisces and it's going to retrograde all the way back to 15. You know, Neptune travels very slowly, so it's not much, but that's what it is. So all of you with natal placements in 15 to 18 of any mutable signs, and especially Pisces here, um, you, we're dealing very closely with this, uh, this particular retrograde from Neptune, okay? So again, with Neptune, we are adding the element of uncertainty, of the blurriness of the lines here. So, you know, if, if, it's, if it's aspecting your relationship, for example, for Venus, you want to pay attention to relationships. If it's aspecting Mars, you want to pay attention to health and to energy levels and to masculine figures as well. If it's aspecting your Mercury, then it's all about the communication factor, the, you know, the maybe your work revolves a lot, a lot around Mercury related things. And you definitely want to, you, maybe you'll be reevaluating your work and, um, but you just definitely want to go at your own pace here with a Neptune um, aspecting your natal Mercury because it can be a time of like mental fogginess and blurriness and uncertainty. But depending on what aspect it's making, it could also be a really, really, really highly spiritual time. If, let's say you have a, a natal Mercury in Pisces and, and, and Neptune is in a conjunction with your natal Mercury, this is a time where your dreams are just going to get so vivid, so vivid. You know, for most people that have a Neptune and Mercury conjunction, it's like dreams is one of the first things that it impacts, but just a lot of psychic perception and intuition and just a lot of mystical things, you know? So um, the, the Neptune retrograde is going to happen from June 21st until November 26th. And that's why the week prior to this uh, June 17 here, 
is very important because that whole week Neptune is going to be stationing, so it's going to be charged. So yeah, this 18 to 15 Pisces zone is a very sensitive spot for uh, Neptune. And then of course, all the mutable signs, which are um, Virgo here on the other end, Virgo, and then Gemini and uh, Sagittarius as well. <clears throat> These are all uh, the mutable signs. And, and this is what you wanna look for in your natal chart. With that being said, now it's Venus's turn. It's Venus's turn to begin this um, T-square conversation. So now we're adding the relationship factor, women, okay? Um, a lot of the social aspect of our life as well, okay? So because uh, uh, Venus is also very social, it's all about, uh, the, and especially in Gemini, you know, this is very much... A, directed to a lot of social activity. So it could be work-related social activity, you know, a little bit of both, um, but definitely relationships too. We don't want to jump the gun here, okay? Like making big decisions because Mercury is in retrograde zone. And now it's Venus's turn to want to embrace the world and maybe take on more than it can chew. But it is in a T-square with a freshly stationed retrograde Neptune that can add a little bit of confusion. So we want to just breathe and take it slowly. That's all. That's all. Especially those of you who are having birthdays around this time and are carrying this into your year. And of course, you and natal moons in the last degrees of Aquarius. But... Um, especially, especially Pisces. Let's see why. Here we are. Um, so let me see here. Yeah, so especially Pisces, because as the moon enters Pisces, we are having this um, becoming a lot tighter. And it will, let me see. Yeah. Exactly, for the whole duration of the moon in Pisces. Now it's Pisces' turn to, to, to be careful here, but it's more on the relationship sector. Remember, in the end of May, in the first week of June, it was Mercury, right? Or I don't remember the exact dates I gave now, but that was more communication. Then afterwards, it was more of the, the power factor, the solar plexus, the, the sun, masculine figures, and, and so forth. And now we have women, and we have the relationship factor as well. And, and look at this, it's exactly 1717, with while the moon is still in Pisces. So you natal moons in Pisces, you guys want to look out for this one here. Okay, this may be a time where you may be going back and forth about decisions, for example, some decisions that have to do with relationships and just weighing a lot of pros and cons. You may feel a little more uncertain or confused or just like uh, scattered um, during this time. And especially the natal moons in Pisces, this, this can be carried on to the next month as well. Okay, but, but don't, don't, don't get discouraged here because this is not the only thing going on. Like there are other things as well. Like we still have all this, look, look at this, these energetics here now with Mars and Mercury in this conjunction, even, you know, a few days ago. I mean, it, actually it has been building up since, let's see. Wow, since like June 17th or maybe even a little bit before. Since June 15th all the way until at least, let's say June 22, 23, there is this conjunction from Mercury and Mars together for all of you lunar returns between this period of time. And this is a fantastic time for speeding things up in regard to work. Mental clarity here, mental sharpness. So even though there may be the uncertainty within certain dynamics, namely relationships in this situation, there's still a lot of clarity for um, a lot of other factors, especially when it's related to work and to business and to speech. We want to be careful not to, um, you know, this conjunction here can be a little problematic because, uh, you know, we do have Mars and, and Mercury here that have just been coming out of this out of bounds, very opinionated, very strong, very highly, you know, energetic. And together, they can be quite the loud mouth. They can be argumentative. They can be really piercing with their words as well. So, you know, there is this, the two sides of the coin here. Um, but overall speaking, Mercury in, in conjunct uh, Mars, this gives a really great 
precision and, and clarity and just sharpness when it comes to decision making and you know and uh and, and work related things as well so and let's remember that they are coming out of this conjunction with the north node too so there is a lot of momentum coming from the soul that is you know mercury and, and, and mars are just fully charged with that soul purpose right that soul movement and then they come out of this conjunction with the north node just so charged and ready to go and you see how like both of them together here can really make things happen during this week they're they're ready to make anything happen so this is what's happening on the the, the third week here those are like the main things that are happening on the third week and then on the fourth week we have the moon happy lunar returns for here we have june 24th until the end of june um so here we have the end of pisces lunar return for the end of pisces then we have aries the moon is going to be in aries on this week the moon is also going to be in taurus this week and then half of gemini these are the lunar returns for the last week of june okay so you that have your natal moons in these signs last few degrees of pisces um all of aries all of taurus and half of gemini you guys are having your lunar return on this week and the main things about this week is really the um this 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 aspect here this factor that even though venus is starting to separate in this t-square it still is you know especially for the natal moons in pisces like it's still very active and for the first the ones that are the the, the um the, the first few degrees of Aries as well. You, you wanna be careful, especially when, you're, especially when it comes with women, when it has to do with women. And the reason for that is because not only we have this Venus factor, which also represents women, that is opposing Jupiter, right? And of course, in a T-square with, with Neptune, but we're also gonna have these first few degrees of Aries, the moon conjuncts Chiron, which can be an ouch point. And so we have these two women factors here, the moon conjunct Chiron and Venus opposing Jupiter that can add an element of, it doesn't necessarily need to be with women, okay? We know that moon also represents home, represents our emotional state. <clears throat> but just because we have at the same time happening these two factors with women figures, right? Venus and um, and um moon we just want you know the, the odds are greater let's put it that way the odds are greater for some sort of of, of like confusion happening regarding women so those of you with the with the lunar especially with the natal moon in the first few degrees of aries you guys want to be careful with this women factor and just um keep an eye out for that and also keep an eye out just to see how astrology works. Like it's interesting. It's it's interesting to see things unfold and play out, you know? So keep an eye out for that. And then besides the T-square, we, we have um, Mercury entering Leo as well. So Mercury enters Leo on, is it June 26th or 27th? It's, I think it's on the 26th, but it's a few hours later in the day so you know mercury and leo anything in leo is flamboyant anything in leo i mean the first word that always comes to me when i say leo is flamboyant <laughs> i think i always use that word because <laughs> like leo just like you know leo is all about the center stage and, and being spotlight <clears throat> and so uh, mercury and leo really does add that dramatic aspect to our speech and to our thinking that, you know, the, um, it's so, I mean, Leo, you gotta love Leo for all of its, you know, dramatic qualities and all of its flamboyant qualities. It's like, there's still this aspect of joy and happiness about Leo that you just like, you, you can't help but just melt like butter under the sun. <laughs> you know, Leo is so warm and friendly and, and, and Mercury entering Leo is, you know, overall, generally speaking, this is a, a great time for putting your work out there and you just have that extra um, like aura of, of joy and that whole spotlight effect when you speak. And so, of course, when it comes to work and Mercury related things and business and work, I mean, this is fantastic for 
really giving that perfect speech, you know, <laughs> at the very least. I mean, this is so general, of course. There's so many other factors that come into play here. You know, let's keep in mind that only a week and a half later here, or maybe two weeks, Mercury is actually stationing a retrograde. So, you know, there's a lot happening with Mercury's storyline. But overall, here we have, we still have a conjunction here between Mercury, Mars, and Juno, like really speeding things up, especially in relation in regard to partnerships and new people that come into our life, um, relationships, people you're meeting now, um, relationships that are beginning now. There's a lot of like momentum, like to go ahead and to speed up. And this last week of June, there's this focus continues. You know, Mercury prepares to conjunct Juno, which is the relationship factor here. And then Mars also prepares to, you know, enter, uh, I think it enters Leo on the 1st of July. But, you know, there still is this, this conjunction that is happening. And so even as we conclude the month, we have you know, all these energetics that are really supportive, especially toward the last few days, like Venus is not, is no longer in this opposition with, with Jupiter. It's definitely, you know, well, like dissipating and then separating. So with all this movement here, like we, we close the month with a lot of momentum to move ahead and to keep going, keep going, keep going. So overall, um, that is what I have going on for the month of v uh, the month of the month of video, just because I saw look to do videos. I saw the, the word video here. <laughs> anyway, okay. I think we, this video is pretty long, right? But I, I think, let me know if you liked the, 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 the way that I organized the wheel here. I, I like this look, how things are much bigger and there, there aren't all these lines. Um, um, you know, interfering. Like, I, I just wanted more of a clean look. I just want you guys to be able to see what the planets are doing, period. So, and in case you, you haven't noticed, like, the main aspects that I work with are the opposition and the square for, for general transits and conjunctions. And occasionally, if it's a significant trine or sometimes a sextile, you know, but the more energetic ones, the ones that are more impactful and more uh, um, like the highest probability for, for, for us to feel it in a big way really are the conjunction, square, and opposition. So those are the ones that I mainly stick with here. So that's why like I think all those other lines, they can just get a little too messy and all that, but I think we're all good now. So I hope you enjoyed it. You let me know in the comments below where your moon is and how you feel like all the, these energetics are affecting you and, and how things are unfolding in your life now after the, the, the Scorpio full moon and now that we're settling into this new, a little bit of a calmer energy. Let me know how you're feeling this. You know, I'm always curious to know. And also, um, the the uh, the month of June is very supportive. You know, even even though we're still concluding a lot of lunar returns from last month and all the the change factor and relationships, there's still a lot of support this month for us to move ahead. That's like the main message. Moving ahead is a massive factor for the month of June, and and we're preparing for a massive culmination here of these themes in July as we prepare for the eclipses. So, you know, there's a lot more to come. There's a lot more to come. Remember the eclipse that happened in, 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 in Capricorn, the eclipses that, that happened in January, right? We instigated that Capricorn zone. And six months later, we have the opposition effect. When we have the cancer season in July when we have the other eclipses happening here on this end. So this is where the blossoming takes place, where the culmination point takes place of what originated here, right? And these themes are now coming at a point where not only it's the blossoming, the culmination, but it's also where we begin to look forward, to move forward. And the universe is assisting us with that. It's helping us starting by June. Starting by June, we're having a focus in the cancer energy, which is really where we're supposed to be looking at at the end of the day.
So this video has been very, very power packed with information for all of you astrology lovers, lots to sit on, lots to take notes here, lots to think about, and most important of all, keep your eye out to see how these things unfold, how these things play out in your life and also in the life of others around, because there's nothing, nothing like you using astrology in your own experience and not just sitting here and listening to me tell you how it works, but you actually paying attention and observing it and watching it unfold in other people's lives and in your life as well. That is when the astrology journey truly begins when you do that. Okay. So signing out for now, for now, stay tuned. We are coming with the out of bounds. My goodness. When you talk about these out of bound planets, there's not a lot of information out there. So I'm just like, this is like top priority in my list right now. I really want to make this video for you. Subscribe to be notified for when this video is coming out. Most importantly, subscribe to the email list because that is where all the updates are done through the email list. The links are below and I will see you next time. Happy month of June.